Howdy, this is Tubal Kane, and before I begin today's video, I'd like to make a special announcement about my shirt here. I just turned 10 million views here recently, and while my daughter and her family were down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, they went to Dollywood and they had this special shirt made up for me on the day that I turned 10 million views. And thank you to all you viewers out there that helped make this possible and uh, please continue watching. And now on with today's video. Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. And in today's video I'm going to show you how to turn a radius on the end of a shaft. Now there's several ways of getting a radius and I'm going to cover three different ways. There are probably many more and on different size uh, shafts or uh, round stock and I'm going to start with the simplest method and then in the next video we're going to talk about turning a ball on the lathe. So let's get on with radius turning or turning a hemisphere. The simplest method of turning a radius on the end of the shaft is to use a tool and this is made by the Severance Company who make very high quality tools this is called a rod end forming cutter and you have to have the correct size for each shaft size this is a 3 16 this is a tool I bought many years ago to uh, to make a little radius shaft for a project I was working on and selling and uh, I think I made 10,000 parts with this and there's a look at a couple of the shafts there's a, a brass and steel 3 16 with a radius turn on the end. The Severance Tool Company out of Saginaw, Michigan is a big producer of these tools and they make them anywhere from uh, a 1 32nd diameter rod up to a 1 inch and I think they make special sizes on special order as well. So that's the Severance Company. Now let's turn uh, a couple of uh, radiuses on the lathe. I'm at the Atlas lathe and this is the severance uh, cutting tool in the tailstock chuck and 3 16 brass installed in a three jaw chuck and that's just rough sawn. I didn't even face that off. There doesn't seem to be a need for that and you just feed it in until the radius is completed. That's all there is to it. Now I'll do one in steel, although there is not much difference. This is 3 16 mild steel. and I like to use a little cutting oil or a cutting fluid of, of some type to preserve the tool. And the disadvantage to this is that it does require special tooling. This is often done on turret lathes. And there they are in the 3 16 size. Quite a nice finish. The second way of making a radius on the lathe is uh, with a form tool. Now you recall this form tool or profile tool that I made several videos back when I talked about a uh, oil dauber for the South Bend lathe. And I pretty much showed you how to make one of these but now we're going to make one that will turn just a radius rather than a ball so it's going to look similar to this corner right here we're going to do that on the Bridgeport mill this is just a sample and mild hot roll steel and this is tool steel water hardening uh, precision ground stock quarter inch thick and then I'm going to harden it and temper it but I'll do the heat treating off camera because I've uh, shown a little bit of that and in the future I'm going to cover extensively hardening, tempering and other forms of heat treating. Be sure and go back and look at that video on uh, 
making the oil dauber because when I made this form tool I used a taper end mill. Now many of you will not have taper end mills so I'm going to show you how to do this without uh, using a taper end mill but we're going to do it in the milling machine and we're basically cutting a compound angle. Now should you ever make one of these profile cutters you can do it on the Bridgeport mill and you can certainly do it by uh, tilting the head but you have to tilt the head in two directions and many of you home shop machinists out there if you're anything like me you would rather take a beating than uh, tilt the head and then have to tram it back in so this is the way to do it without going through all that aggravation I slid the big Bridgeport uh, vise down to the end. I don't like to lift them off because they're so heavy. And I'm using a, a very lightweight vise here. It's actually a drill press vise and uh, uh, it's not really meant for milling but for this small job it's going to do just fine. And I've already clamped this to the table and this is a little bit awkward here the way I had to uh, clamp it here with this, uh, this clamp back here and I got it clamped up here on the front and it's already tilted to five degrees because we're going to mill five degree angles and in the collet I have a half inch uh, standard end mill. Now the vise I said is at five degrees but and that'll give us the angle in one direction but we have to tilt the work in the other direction and we're going to do that by using taper gauges and this taper gauge is five degrees. Here's the set of taper gauges and they're quite inexpensive and they come in uh, up to 5 degrees and then it's uh, 10, 15, 20 and, and so on but we're using the 5 degree one for this setup. These little tilting vices have a tiny little protractor right here and to me it's so small that it's bordering on worthless or for some jobs where it doesn't matter much you can get a ballpark uh, angle there but what I do if I want something accurate I, I take a taper gauge and I, I lay it under here and uh, everything of course is loose and then I get it adjusted just the way I want it and then I tighten up the four bolts there's two on each side to hold the uh, angle vise at uh, the correct angle that I set it at but I do not like this little protractor that is over here on this end. Just for information purposes I do have a quality tilting vise with the six inch jaws made by Dayton but the thing is so heavy it takes two men and a boy to move it and uh, again I'm all alone in the shop so that's why I use that little vise but this one does have a protractor on it that looks quite a bit better. You know the larger in diameter that a protractor is and that one's about two and a half inches the better. In other words if you could have a protractor that was 12 inches in diameter it would be much more accurate than one like on that cheap little vise. Now here's how I set up the uh, tool steel in the vise. This is a three quarter inch uh, parallel put that right in the middle and then I'm going to take the uh, taper gauge and set it right on top of the parallel and then the precision ground flat stock on top of that without too much sticking out because uh, there's a limit of how tight you can get this vise it is not an Acme screw it is a V type thread and I'll tighten that up real well and that is ready to mill because I'm only going to mill a little bit off of this corner like on this sample and that will give me a five degree uh, relief angle and actually in two directions. The gauge and parallel can be removed they have served their purpose and set off to the side and I'm going to bring the tool down now or should I say raise the table up close to this corner of the work because this is where I want the cutting uh, to take place and there is uh, no need for a layout but of course you could lay it out if, if you desire. I did extend the work out from the vise just a little farther because I do want to mill the side of that just a little bit at the five degree angle and I'm also going to mill the front of it at a five degree angle and the reason I'm doing that is twofold. Number one that'll help me locate the edge 
and once I do that milling I will zero out my digital readout and uh, secondly that does give me a cutting edge all the way across and on the side should I want to take a little facing cut or whatever when I get on to the lathe with this and I am uh, using a half inch cutters and that will give me a quarter inch radius so I'm making a quarter inch radius cutting tool and I'm cutting the five degree angle across the front of the tool and when I complete this pass I will zero out the digital readout on the X axis, axis and now I know that I am right on the edge of the work so I am zeroing that out and now I'm milling a uh, five degree angle on the side of the tool and I can't go in very far or I will hit the vise so I'm just going in as far as I can safely and I'm wearing my safety glasses. That's as far as I can go. And now I am zeroing out the Y axis on the digital readout. This is the sample piece. So now that I know where the edges are, all I'm going to do is mill out or notch that corner uh, so that I have that radius. So I'm going to move it in 250 thousandths on the X and 250 thousandths on the Y. Put a little oil on it while I'm doing that and uh, then this is completed. I'm watching the digital readout actually closer than I am watching the work. This is cool steel, so it's fairly hard compared to mild steel, even though it's in its softened state. And there I am. There's a look at the digital readout, and I've moved in 250 thousandths in each direction. And uh, I'm a half a thousandth over there, but it couldn't matter less.